Hi, this is Ryan Turner with VWDiesel.net and today we are going to be cleaning the intake manifold out on a Mark IV TDI. This happens to be a Beetle, but it happens in a Golf or a Jetta all the same. The EGR gas comes back through the intake manifold, sticks to the side, sides of it and begins over time to build up a thick plaque buildup, which we refer to as diesel boogers. And these have a tendency to choke down the intake manifold to about the size of a dime and it can even cause a car not to start or run very well. This particular model will get up to 55 or 60, but it's very slow. And it's, uh, after inspecting it through the EGR port and the, um, yeah, the EGR valve, um, anti-shutter valve, that's what I'm going for. It's, it's choked down to about the size of a dime, a little bit smaller. So we are going to go through the process and show you how to clean that out today. Now that the cowl is removed, we are able to remove the engine cover and the intake tube and start working on it. If you had a Jetta or a Golf, the cowl wouldn't have to be removed on it because beetles are the devil. So let's get to work on that. The previous owner on this one has for some reason put Phillips head screws on here. So we'll take those off. As you can see, this engine hasn't been taken care of the best in the past. It's pretty nasty. So we are going to take this intake tube off. If you have a Jetta, the other end of this tube, or a Golf, either one, will actually be down inside behind the headlight bucket, so you'll have to snake your arm around in there to get it out. So using a nice set of European hose clamp pliers, we just simply move the clamps and take the hose off. Next we are going to take the intake tube off of the air box that goes down to the turbo. And you can use vice grips or channel locks or whatever on these clamps, but these pliers just really make it a nice job. And next we are going to work on pulling these accessories off starting with the MAF or with the EGR. A small pick is nice to get around and help these slide off like this or a flathead screwdriver will work. And so we're just simply going to start unplugging everything, making note of where it all goes so that we can put it back together when we're done. On the anti-shutter EGR valve here, the nipple on this actuator on the back is very easy to break off. <clears throat> so be careful with that when you're working on it. This one has actually a, the hose has been cut and a piece of vacuum line has been put into place. That works. Or you could simply clip, clip the vacuum line off at the base and then worry about removing the excess when you get it off so that the nipple doesn't break off. Now would actually be a great time to start replacing these vacuum lines because uh, you're already in here, but I would suggest cleaning the intake manifold first and then replacing the vacuum line so that you don't induce multiple errors into the process while you're trying to solve one problem. Always fix one thing at a time on a Volkswagen because multiple things like to break. So we're going to just keep disconnecting stuff like back here so that we can move this whole intake tube out of the way, uh, this coolant line out of the way, and all the vacuum hoses. Okay, we have rec removed the vacuum holder on the top and now we're going to disconnect the line going down the intake tube. Now this line often gets pretty crappy as this one is and really needs to be replaced so that you get good turbo actuation. With the whole intake tube loose and free of connectors, <clears throat> we are going to snake our hose clamp tool down to the other end of this line and remove the intake tube. It's kind of a hard process to show you, so you'll just have to use your fingers on it and see the clamp down there. 
Okay, um, on the intake manifold boot uh, ducting, there is a bracket that bolts onto the pipe, and then this bolt actually here is on the lower part of the intake manifold. Don't forget to take that off. And once the clamp is off, you can wiggle it loose, and I simply just leave it sit back down in here. You can pull it out, um, but it doesn't have to come out, so it's just easier to let it sit there. Next, we will take this coolant hose off, and then we will work on removing the EGR stuff. All right, next we're going to remove this coolant line. You shouldn't remove a whole, lose a whole lot of coolant here. So we'll just take our pliers and pull the line off. There's another one on the EGR cooler that comes right out the top. Take our pliers around there and match the clamp on that. And then just get it back out of the way. Next, we're going to take the anti-stutter valve off. And it has three five millimeters on the flange, two on the top and one on the bottom. And then it has, on the bottom, it also has two six millimeter that attach it to the EGR cooler. First, you have to take the EGR cooler elbow off. That is the two six millimeters on the anti-stutter valve here and the two six millimeters on the EGR cooler there. Once that is, once that is done and this hose is removed, we can take the three five millimeters off and remove this and we'll see how nasty it really is on the inside. Now you can see we have the valve removed and you can see all of the diesel boogers caked up in there. <clears throat> so much so that we can actually just break them off and roll them in our hands. Now this stuff is clogging up the intake manifold. I can get my pinky through there and even my ring finger, but it is really clogged up and really restricting the flow. This happens quite a bit. This motor has 216,000 miles on it. I don't know if this has been done in the past, but generally it's a good idea to do this process every 100,000 miles. Now we are going to remove the EGR cooler and then work on the intake manifold. All right, next we're going to take this other EGR tube off. There are two six millimeters right up here. And then at the other end, there are two 13 millimeters that are on top of the exhaust manifold and turbo housing. I'm gonna start with taking these off. And it's probably a good idea to put some penetrant oil on the ones on the other end and let them soak for a bit while you're doing this so that you don't strip them out and cause yourself more headache. All right, next this tube is off. I may have said that the bolts on the exhaust flange on the bottom were 12 or 13 mil, but they're really 10 mil. Or, I'm sorry, they're really 12 mil. I've got a 10 mil in my hand. So now we're gonna take the EGR cooler off itself. It has one 10 mil here, and then another one down here on this side, and another one down here on this side on little flanges off of the tube itself. So once those are off, we'll be able to kind of move this out of the way. Okay, now that the three bolts are out, we are gonna take the EGR cooler and just kind of move it out of the way and set it up here. Now be careful because I don't have this port covered. I guess you could stick the coolant line back on it if you wanted to. And now this is ready to be taken off. It is six, six millimeter Allens. It is very nice to have a ball Allen to get into some of these. Uh, you have to be careful with the ball Allens because they can round off. And to have a nice short six millimeter Allen. Now there's one on the outside. Right, let's see if I can, there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and then one on the very outside. So you'll have to just feel around for these, take your time. There is a heat shield on the exhaust manifold that needs to come off to be able to get one of the first bolts off. That is two 12 millimeters, just like the EGR bolts on the flange, on the turbo flange. So we'll take those off first, and then we will start on the exhaust bolts. All right, we have the intake manifold off, and you can see that the gunk is all the way down into the bottom, clogging up the runners here, having a hard time getting my, in my index finger in there. So now comes the fun part. We're going to soak this in diesel or kerosene or gasoline, just some kind of fuel of that type for a little bit to break it all loose and then we're going to burn the ever-loving piss out of it. While you are here it would be a good idea to make sure that your turbo vanes are actuating fine. 
Uh, if not, you can try to free them by moving the actuator up and down several times, or you may end up having to take the turbo off, splitting that to clean up all the carbon buildup on there. If you are looking down in the engine and you see the top of the turbo in between the two halves, there is a little metal piece that goes down to the vacuum diaphragm, and that is what you press on to check to see if your turbo vanes actuate. You can also take the line that goes down here, the same one that we took off the intake tube, and apply vacuum to that with a mighty vac and see if that moves it to test the operation of that also. If it doesn't move, if your turbo is all caked up with diesel boogers too, it would be a good time now to go ahead and remove your exhaust manifold, remove your turbo, and clean that out too, uh, which is a video for another day. All right, next we're going to manually remove as much of this as possible. Uh, I have a long flathead screwdriver that I actually use for this quite a bit, so it's already pretty dirty. And we are just going to start breaking the stuff loose as best as we can and throwing it in the trash can. You want to try to get as much of this, I mean, broke free as you can to make the cleaning process easier. I mean, just look at all this stuff just continually flowing out of here. Now that we've removed about three pounds of junk out of the intake manifold, we're going to pour a little bit of diesel in here. Let it soak for a bit. Now you definitely want to pour the diesel out before we start this next process. And in general, none of this process is safe and do it at your own risk. Now that we have it cleaned out, we are going to use MAP gas or propane works too and compressed air to clean this out. So we're going to turn our MAP on and this is a little bit black science and a little bit witchcraft. We come around to the other side and we are just going to introduce a little bit of air. All right, the intake manifold is clean now, but it is still very hot. You can see all the charcoal bits of burnt diesel boogers laying on the ground, which we'll clean up and dispose of properly. And now that we are waiting on the intake manifold to cool, we are going to clean up the EGR valve. Okay, here we are going to take our diesel booger screwdriver and simply work at scraping as much of this stuff as we can out of here. Once that is accomplished, we will clean it out most likely with carb cleaner or gasoline or diesel, some kind of solvent like that. But we won't set this on fire like we did the intake manifold. For this step, we are going to use this highly specialized coat hanger to make a tool to clean the rest of the gunk out of the intake manifold. So we're going to take and straighten the end of it out and that's what's going to go in our drill. And we are simply going to pull it together like that, twist it up a few times. And that simply is what we are going to run in the intake runners to clean them out. I like coat hangers because they have a a lot of good uses and this is nice and flexible and it doesn't cost us anything. And I'm sorry if it is somewhat out of frame, my cameraman had to leave a little bit ago so now I'm doing the video on my own. All right, we're going to take our coat hanger on a drill bit. Simply work at taking it inside. Each, we're going to take it inside each runner. and work to beat all this stuff out of there. Spend a good five, 10 minutes doing this because you want to get all of it out. All right, the intake manifold is now clean and ready to go. So installation is just the reverse of removing it. 
Make sure that you use all new gaskets on everything. Check the torque specs, which I hope to have in the bottom of the show notes here. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or send us a message. Let us know somehow and we'll see if we can answer it for you. Once again, this is Ryan Turner with VWDiesel.net. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that it helped you out a good bit.